A very hearty good day, students. This is World Read Aloud Day. It is a fantastic and fascinating day where we can read stories aloud. And this is being brought by Hodder Education and the Ministry of Education. They have all collaborated to bring this day and make it real for you. My name is Deborah Jean-Baptiste Samuel, and it is a pure delight for me to share this story with you now as I read aloud. <laughs> the story is The Village Washer by Samuel Selvan. Shortly after the last war, the laundry situation took a turn for the worse in the village of San Susi, a sugarcane hamlet 30-odd miles from the capital of Port of Spain in Trinidad. Here, Ma Lambi ruled as supreme, as the only washer in the district, and in her sole supremacy, she grew careless after she had established herself. Ma Lambi was old and dark and possessed remarkable strength, which seemed to cause her legs to bend, and so she walked like a duck. With a declaration of war, she began to be neglectful of collars and sleeves and the folds of trousers, which places the villagers always look to test her workmanship. If a button broke off as she scrubbed the clothing with a corn husk, she no longer bothered to mend it. And if there was a tear when her gnarled hands went into the cloth, she no longer bothered to mend the tear. There used to be a time she used to use four bars of blue soap. And if dirt was still stubborn, she bought a bit of washing soda and did her best to get the clothes clean again. There was a time she used to use from four to six buckets for two tubs. Those days were gone. Ma Lambi was doing her own thing. She was heating her coal pot and wrapping cloth around her handle to protect her hand as she pressed the clothes. But the clothes were no longer very clean and the pressing was no longer very good. And then she would stop using and greasing the irons like she used to. When she was ironing, she just slid the hot iron around quickly, folded the clothes, put them in the flat wooden tray, and took them around to distribute to deliver on Saturday. However, Ma Lambi's excuse that there was a war on did not stop villagers from complaining. They were complaining. They worked in the cane fields and came in, and some chose to then do their own washing. But the old woman paid no attention to the complaints of the villagers. She always promised she would do better the following week. And then she came around balancing the tray on her head and the customers, the villagers, would observe dirt under the collars and everything just as she started to get delinquent. Malambi was unperturbed, she said. In fact, she was brazen enough to announce that she was raising her laundry prices. Can you imagine? As you know, she told the woman as she stopped at each hut to collect their dirty linen. We are fighting a war and the prices of all things are going up. So from now on, I'll have to charge more to do up the clothes. Long time a shirt was 12 cents. Now it had to be 18 cents. Long time a skirt was 18 cents. Now it had to be a shilling. And from hut to hut, brazen like that, my lambi passed. Well, words started to fly furiously among the villagers. Neighbor? You hear about Ma Lambi, how she charged more to do the clothes now? You can imagine that. And look how careless she get in, not even bothering to sew up a tear or put on a button. Yes, it's true. I only wish we had another washer in this village because she's the only one that is why she get it on so. Well, I for one going to try to do the washing myself. If I have time in the evening because this woman must be mad or something, the war, she crazy, prices going up, she's mad. A delegation of housewives visited Malambi where she lived in her little hut under a mango tree. And they had a great discussion over two hours. And the woman made their thrust and they shook their fists at Malambi, who had told them flatly they could do their own washing if they did not like her terms. She lost five customers the following week. And then the others were had to force to put up with her poor and terrible 
conditions. Malabi smiled herself. She went about her washing. She was having her own way. She did not care about anybody in the village. But word reached another hamlet called Donkey City, where an aged Negro woman named Mark Prokop migrated to San Susi to make business. And she was a very good washerwoman. So she decided she would take some of the business from Malambi. The day Ma broke up arrived, she was greeted with shouts and smiles. The people were so delighted that there was an option. There was another village washerwoman now. And Ma Prokop was a clever woman. First day, she put up notice, saying she was willing to take in laundry at the pre-wartime prices. So her prices were lower than Miss Feng, Miss Ma Lambi. She said she was an experienced washer from Donkey City, and she gave complete satisfaction to one and all. It was a long notice. The spelling wasn't so good, but her washing was excellent. When Malambi heard about it, she waddled over to the, to the shop and put up a piece of cardboard, and she had a villager write a few words in red paint, saying that she is going to get a washing machine, which is going to make old clothes look like new. Now, there was no electricity in the village, so it was a huge lie anyway. But for the first time in her life, Malambi was forced to come up with something because she was losing a trade. So Malambi could not understand the success of this new washerwoman. Ah, she started off spreading lies. You know, she told the woman by the shop, that new washerwoman is a nasty woman. She's not rinsing the clothes and she looks so sickly. She might spread disease in the village. But Ma Prokok's actions had the whole village on her side. She did an excellent job, and she even bought sweets and candy for the children and told them stories. Everyone loved her. Ma Lambi now starts a malicious rumor that Ma Prokop is an obia woman, and she could change into an animal during the night. Now, these villagers are superstitious. So, their eyes opened quite wide, and they were wondering if it were possible that this was an Ogbia lady that they had now in the village. An animal was wounded sometime, and Malambi dragged the animal in the backyard so there'd be a trail of blood. And the next morning, this was Malambi. Huh? It looked like Ma broke up working overtime last night. Look at blood from the Obia woman here. Well, villagers started to whisper, and they wondered about things. But the children were so fond of this new village washer, it was hard to believe she could be capable of such evil. So, Malambi did another thing. She did more than talk. One night, she poured a gallon of poison on the roots of the big silk cotton tree in the center of the village. And then the next day, she said, the evil that this new washerwoman is bringing will cause the silk cotton tree to die. Well, true enough, after a while, the silk cotton tree died. It just withered up, just as Malambi had predicted. And within two weeks, the tree was a standing skeleton. The village woman got together to discuss it. They said it happens just like Malambi says. It looked like this Ma Prokop is probably an Obia woman. We have to put it to the test. She has to look into a mirror and make the sign of a cross over her head. If she's a real Obia woman, she cannot do that at all. Ma Prokop, in the meantime, was aware through the whisperings about what was going on. She said nothing. She just made a visit back to the city where she came from with a smile on her lips. Two days later, uh, the housewives were in Ma Prokop's yard, lagging there, laundry there. Ma Lambi was not there. And Ma Prokop said, go into her house. You would not see any mirrors, and you will find funny things like bones and bottles and feathers. The villagers did just what she suggested. And would you believe, out from the house, the things that she had herself hidden in the new washerwoman's house, out came bones and mirrors. So Mark Prokop was under suspicion. One villager went straight up to her. Mark Prokop, we hear you working over in this village and causing evil spirit to walk around in the night. Mark 
program say, what nonsense you are talking about? And she put her hands on her hips and look out, raged. They left her standing there. They said, we're going to search your house. And they came out with things that looked very suspicious. Well, Ma Lambi was laughing. Ma Prokop was a bit concerned. She says, those things do not belong to me. And she made the sign of the cross on her two forefingers, and she kissed it loudly. They belong to Malambi because she is the one so spiteful since I come to the village. She put those things there. The women started murmuring among themselves. Huh? So they went inside now and they said, all right, if she's an Obia woman, she cannot look in a mirror. Malambi must be telling a lie if Miss Prokop is not guilty. So Miss Prokop caught the turning of the tide. She said, let us go over by Malambi and give her that test with the mirror and the cross. I have to see, because there's no need for me to hide. And so Miss Prokop was able to make the sign of the cross and look boldly in the mirror. So they went across by Malambi's house, and she started. You, Malambi, you fooling people and saying I work in Obia in this village? When you and the Obia woman all this time come out here in the yard, let us put you to the test. My lambi came out of the house charging but trembling. She said, why are you making noise in this yard? She tried to keep a steady face, but something was wrong. They said, look, we have a mirror across here. Ma broke up, took out the parcel and stepped ahead and put the mirror in Ma Lambi's face at the same time lifting the cross over her head. Well, no one had ever heard the words that came out of Ma Prokop's mouth. She started to scream. The glint in her eyes was overcoming. She looked fearful. She started to shake like she had ague. She could not look in the mirror. Clasping her hands on her head, she ran screaming back into her hut. The villagers all looked on and took note. Ma Prokop said, Nothing more to worry about in a tone of authority as she put her mirror and cross back into her bag. She said, you will never have Obia here as long as I stay in this village. The next morning, Ma Prokop stood by her hut and watched Ma Lambi take up all her belongings, wrap it up in a sheet, slug it over her shoulder, and was walking out of that San Susi. As the old woman looked back for a last glimpse of San Susi, she saw Ma Prokop leaning on the fence, watching her and laughing. And with a yell of terror, she waddled herself out, pelting out of San Susi. Only her shadow remained with the morning sun. That was it. The Obia brick. The Obia done. No more evil in San Susi because the new washerwoman was in tongue. <laughs>